Straight Ahead on IU Newsnet Daily. The Indiana University Dance Marathon concluded by raising over $3 million for the kids. After an unreal undefeated start to the season, the Hoosiers are locking down coach Kurt Signetti long term. We have the details coming up in sports. Dispatchers in Monroe County are facing a serious problem with a lack of available ambulances. All those stories and more, IU Newsnet Daily starts right now. It's Tuesday, November 19th. Hello and welcome to IU Newsnet Daily. I'm Luke Artema. And I'm Jay Upshaw. Indiana University Dance Marathon concluded Sunday morning at the IU Tennis Center in Bloomington, raising over $3 million for Riley Hospital for Children. The 36-hour event, which began Friday evening, featured live music, speeches, and stories from Riley families to inspire participants. Since its founding in 1991, the marathon has raised over $53 million to support pediatric care and research at Riley. The Monroe County Library has unveiled its newest Story Walk installation, November 15th at RCA Community Park in Bloomington. The project, which features pages of a children's book displayed along a walking path, encourages literacy and physical activity for all ages. At the End of the Day by Liesel L. Detfelstein, the debut story is set along a wheelchair, a wheelchair accessible path near the park's playground. Indiana's 21st Century Scholars Program has hit a record high in enrollment doubling the number of students for the 2027 and 2028 classes. More than 90,000 students are now in the program thanks to a 2023 law that automatically enrolls eligible students. The program covers full tuition for low-income students at Indiana colleges. Since 1990, the program has helped more than 50,000 students earn degrees. Indiana University trustees took several actions during its recent meeting. IU Newsnet Emma Meredith is here with the details on their busy agenda including the controversial expressive activity policy. Emma? That's right, Jay. The IU Board of Trustees has approved changes to the university's expressive act policy clarifying overnight restrictions. While university sanctioned events can now extend past 11 p.m. with prior approval, spontaneous assembles are not permitted, or also permitted, sorry. However, protesting, petitioning, and other expressive activities remain banned between 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. Meanwhile, the Indiana Graduate Workers Coalition is demanding the termination of IU President Pamela Witten, a reversal of policy and union recognition. Critics argue that the policy and university leadership stifle free speech and create unequal enforcement. Back to you. Thanks, Emma. In other news, late Saturday night, four women were struck by a vehicle at the intersection of 17th Street and Eagleson Avenue. Witnesses described hearing screams and several bodies flying in the air. Three of the women were hurt, were hurt badly, and one remains in critical condition. 20 minutes after the accident, the women were rushed to the emergency room, but there is a reason why it took so long for the woman to get help. Dispatchers in Monroe County are facing a serious problem. There are not enough ambulances. 2023's dispatch records indicate ambulances based in Lawrence County made 53 emergency medical runs in Monroe County. And last year, Monroe County dispatchers asked Lawrence County more than 500 times to put an ambulance on standby. This summer, a solution was finally reached. Monroe County's fire district used federal pandemic funds to buy four ambulances for emergencies. However, only one is in service until further notice. A Bloomington woman is finally sentenced for a fatal drunk driving accident that occurred in 2022. On August 6th, 49-year-old Charity Hall pleaded guilty to hitting and killing 33-year-old Richard Compion and injuring his 5-year-old son. Containers of alcohol were found in the car and Hall's intoxication levels were way over the legal limit. Hall was recently pleaded guilty and has given a 15-year sentence. In Bedford, a woman is recovering from injuries sustained while resisting law enforcement during a traffic stop that led to her OWI arrest. Police stopped 24-year-old Kelsey Eisel of Mich Michelle after she ran a stop sign. Officers detected a strong smell of alcohol, open containers in her vehicle, and other signs of impairment. After failing failed sobriety test and blowing more than twice the legal limit, Eisel resisted arrest and fell, injuring her face. Eisel was treated at IU Health Bedford before being booked into the Lawrence County Jail. While the Indiana Hoosiers football team had a bye week, there was still plenty of excitement on the field in other sports. 
Joining us in the studio now is IU Newsnet's Jack Bassett with a recap of all the action and a look ahead at the Hoosiers' bigger, biggest matchup yet against the Buckeyes. Jack? Hey, thanks Luke and Jay. While the Hoosiers weren't on the field this weekend, IU's wallet certainly was. The university has locked down coach Sir Kurt Signetti through 2032 with a major new contract following his unprecedented success this season. Yes, you heard that right. Kurt Signetti is staying in Bloomington, signing an eight-year, $8 million per year deal to continue to lead the Hoosiers. While he came to Bloomington last November, Signetti was signed to a six-year, $27 million contract. Now with the Rays, he's the 20th highest paid coach in college football. In his first season, Signetti turned the Hoosiers into national championship contenders. While many expected him to get other offers from other programs, Signetti telling Fox Sports, He's not going anywhere. The, the fact of the matter is, we're the emerging superpower in college football. Why would I leave? <laughs> Coach Sig and the fifth-ranked Hoosiers face a defining season matchup against the second-ranked team in the nation, the Ohio State Buckeyes, this Saturday. The game will have major college playoff implications. You won't want to miss the game day experience Saturday in Columbus with a noon kickoff. And let's not forget, IU has a basketball team, too. The Hoosier men's squad played against excitement with a showdown against the South Carolina Gamecocks. Squaring up in Assembly Hall, IU aiming for a 3-0 start to the season. The Hoosiers dominated early, capping off the first half with this spectacular dunk by Cannon Carlisle. Carlisle delivering throughout the game, scoring 12 points and hitting 5 of 9 from the field. The Hoosiers kept up their strong shooting, finishing at 51% from the field as a team more than enough to secure an 87-71 victory and send South Carolina packing. IU returns to action on Thursday as they take on UNC Greensboro. And after a tough start to the season, the IU women's basketball team are looking to make a statement with an upset against the 24th ranked Stanford University. Get to know graduate student Chloe Moore McNeil for the Hoosiers, because look out, she was channeling her inner Steph Curry with lights out shooting from deep. Plus, she was just as impressive on defense, notching four steals on the day. After a tight first quarter, IU took control thanks to a team effort on offense. Guards Shea Szeski, Yarden Garzon, and Moore McNeil all posted double digits in scoring. The Hoosiers shot an impressive 49% from the field, securing their first win over Stanford since 1979, with a final score of 79 to 67. Next up, the ladies head to the Bahamas for a battle for Atlantis to take on Columbia University this Friday. And speaking of much needed wins, the Indianapolis Colts are searching for a spark to keep their season alive. Quarterback Anthony Richardson returned to the starting role this week, aiming to showcase his athleticism and lead the team against the New York Jets. Richardson showing his worth, throwing for 272 yards and scoring three touchdowns including a clutch fourth quarter play to edge out the Jets. Running back Jonathan Taylor added to the effort with 95 rushing yards, while Michael Pittman Jr. led the receivers with 112 yards. Despite a strong showing from Jets running back Brees Hall, who tallied two touchdowns, a late missed field goal left the Jets falling short to the Colts. The 29-26 victory moves the Colts to 6-5 on the season and puts them back in the playoff hunt once again. And sticking with football, a field goal kick by an Indiana native during ESPN's college game day scored him a massive $800,000 payday. This week, college game day traveled to Georgia for the Bulldogs matchup against Tennessee. Georgia's student and soccer player Henry Silver from Fishers, Indiana, took part in Pat McAfee's kicking challenge, a tradition of the show where if a student can kick a field goal for 33 yards through the uprights, they are promised $150,000. But in a surprising twist, McAfee upped the ante, promising $200,000 to two participants and donating an additional $200,000 to Hurricane Relief. Here's a look at Silver's big moment. Let's go, Henry! Former Colts punter and sports analysis, Pat McAfee covers the entire prize from his own pocket each week, making this contest a fan favorite. 
The video of Henry's clutch kick has since gone viral, racking up over 17 million views across social media platforms. Congrats, Henry. Way to represent Indiana. And that does it for sports. Sending it back to UJ and Luke at the desk. Thanks, Jack. IU Bloomington ranked third for midterm study abroad programs and fifth for total students studying abroad in 2022 and 2023. According to the Indiana Daily Student, nearly 4,000 IU students studied abroad in more than 70 countries, including programs in Kenya, Germany, and the Grand Cayman Islands. IU Bloomington led the state with almost 3,000 students abroad. The university also ranked in the top 40 for hosting international students with over 6,300 at Bloomington and 8,900 across all campus. IU remains committed to global learning through internships, faculty programs, and event like, in events like International Education Week. YouTuber now boxer Jake Paul defeated boxing legend Mike Tyson by unanimous decision Friday night in a televised match in Texas. Paul dominated the fight, improving his record to 11-1. Tyson showed glimpses of his old aggression, but struggled to keep up with Paul's speed and stamina. After the loss, Tyson said, I proved nothing to anybody, only myself. And that does it for us here on IU NewsNet Daily. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you back here on Thursday. Until then, stay safe and enjoy the rest of your week.